Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing well. So in this session, I'm here with the complete new sessions on Hyper Mesh, that is Alta Hyperwork software. So I'll be covering uh, from basics to advanced level like structure analysis to nonlinear dynamic explicit implicit analysis, model analysis, okay, frequency based and time based analysis as well. So today, uh, introduction to static analysis using hypermesh i'll be considering the plate with hole as an example as i considered the same thing in all the other softwares like ansys solidworks abacus we'll see the same thing here let's get started here i'll browse the hypermesh software if you want you can just open the file location you could see here is the hyperworks 2022 I'll be using Hypermesh 2022 here. So once you open the Hypermesh, user interface will be like this. So in the beginning, we'll get this particular window to define the preference solver. Okay, this is the user profile. From here, you need to define the required thing. So uh, there are two options: one is radios and Optistruct. So we use Optistruct to deal with the static structural analysis and uh, uh, basic uh, frequency analysis. So if you want to deal with the, deal with the non-linear analysis, we use the radios. Okay. So if you want to import the model, you can go to the file and import model. And from here, you can just browse the location. I'll be using this step file at the moment. You can even use the SolidWorks file and other files. Okay. The formats are available. Yeah. So this is the model. So you could see. Uh, I'll be using. Uh, mixed view at the moment okay now I'll just uh, close this import and I'll switch back to the model so you could see we have the component and the plate here in the beginning when you just import the model this is a solid model the step file so these are the options so the first one component definition material definition then properties definition the load collectors so these are the steps okay we follow you can use these or else you can simply right click and use this so First thing, I'll define the material. To do that, just click on this and just uh, give the name, material name, steel one or steel. You can specify the type isometric. I'll select the different options as well. So mat one for uh, structural analysis, mat four for the thermal analysis properties. Remember that. Hmm? So once you click on uh, create and edit, you have the uh, inks modulus density and the poison so if you click on these things automatically it will take the structural teal properties by default so you don't need to worry so i'll be considering the same structural steel at the moment okay i'll return and here you can see this is the steel you can simply edit the card whenever you want you can change the properties remember that now next thing is to define the property so you can name it so i'll just name it as plate with hole the type i'll choose as 3d as I'm using solid model, so use I'll use the uh, I can as P solid and the material as steel which I had already assigned. Okay, so this is the property which I have created now. Can okay, return. Next thing is to define the load collectors. So first thing I'll simply add the color blue for force, and I'll just add the local name as SPC Fix Show. You want you can change the color for this the red i'll create so these are the uh load collectors okay the fixture and the force is already there now you can simply rename it if you want uh, uh by mistakenly i have spelled it wrong there so fine so you could see the spc fixture is uh, active now it is in bold if you want to switch to force you can simply right click and use make current option so these are the uh, few options you can just deal with in the initial stage you can define the material first after that you can go ahead with the uh, property creation and then after that you can just define the load collectors and then you can mesh it and finally you need to assign the uh, properties to the components that we'll see later I'll go to the 3D and here we have the uh, 3D mesh. So I'll use the volume tetra mesh. So we have the two options one is solid and surface. If you're going to use the surface, you 
can select that just select the uh, solid here and just select entire model inside the graphics area I'm going to consider the element size as 1 from here uh, the triads I'll choose for the 2D uh, radius is used for the uh, uh, like advanced curvatures so type I'll use the 3D type I'll use as tetra okay I'll mesh it so I'll be using this uh, use curvature and the proximity because I'm having the center uh, like curved section so I want the more refined mesh at that region so you could see uh, in the components the base extrude was there are two zero zero one got created with respect to the mesh which we have added and this will be the default component for us to uh, run the analysis remember that so you could see the mesh it is quite finer isn't it if you want you can just uh, still refine it but right now it is fine for us so I'll go back to the geometry and from here I'll create the uh, zero node at the moment because uh, to apply the node I need to select the multiple uh, faces to avoid it you can use these options like uh, create the uh, nodes give uh, zero nodes wherever required you can just orient your model according to the requirement so now instead of creating a uh, node first what I'll do is I'll return and I'll create the uh, line so that I can easily extract the node at the midpoint so I'll use the uh, line nodes linear nodes that is a node to node connection and in the graphics area I'll just select this node and this node and I'll create a line if you have the circular sections you can simply select the circular uh, edge automatically at the center it will create the node okay the line got created you could see and this is the uh, uh, component which has been created for that you can just name it so I'll just name it as line to avoid the confusion later on now I'll create the point a point on a line okay this is the line I'll simply click on create so exactly mid uh, yeah so now this point I'll refer to just select the face as a reference as a dependent and this point as a independent one so I'll go to the uh, 1 1d and from there I'll choose the rigids okay so I'm going to create the rigid connection I'll use the create option independent node I'll select this one okay now to define the face so in all the softwares we define the face right so here I'll select multiple nodes how I'm going to select us by using the reference as uh, nodes uh, multiple nodes here how I need to select these nodes with respect to the geometry by geometry you can select from here and here I'll select the surface so on the surface what and all the nodes are there everything should be captured just add selection you could see all the nodes has been selected for the reference now these are the dependent nodes on this particular independent node so now if I simply apply the load on the independent node one so automatically it will be distributed equally on all the dependent nodes I'll yep so like this you can create this okay so these are the rigid connections so wherever required you better create it so in abacus we do the same thing in uh, solidworks it is quite simple just select the face and magnitude you just need to define it but uh, like quite advanced software like ANSYS abacus uh, hyphen mesh we need to do like this now uh, I'll assign the fixture again you can go back to the uh, fixture you can just make it as current and here constraint I'll just select the nodes with respect to surfaces I'll just select this surface in uh, creating constraint you can easily select the surface yeah we have created the surface all degrees of freedom are zero remember everything you need to tick mark there now make current force just check everything is fine right you just update it if needed okay so this is the point as a reference Just select this 
point and here I'm going to create a force so this force here I'll take it as 10,000 Newton relative size of this particular bar I'll take it as 1 and I'll create it you could see the size with respect to 1 the indication is there the arrow mark along x direction fine so after each and everything we need to define the uh, load keys so here I'll select the static and from here SPC I'll select the SPC and here I'll select the load as force okay just create this particular load step so it is for static analysis written now once everything is done just check for the uh, component you need to assign the property for the component right the property we have assigned plate with hole I have assigned it for the uh, meshed model so just check the properties once if material is not assigned sometimes it might be missed you just need to assign it just check all the properties once again before uh, going to the uh, post processing stage okay so even you can check the components whether it has all the material properties and the uh, piece solid materials and all so once you do that you can just directly go back to this and you can select Optistruct and you can run the analysis okay so this is how you can just follow these simple steps so uh, in the beginning you might feel like it is quite difficult to understand there's all the workflows and all even i felt the same thing even i'm also the learner uh, once you get into the software uh, like if you have learned the basics of any of the tool like the structural analysis and all so all the other tools will become easy as per as my concern or as per i have used all the tools i could say it's quite easy if you know at least any one of the uh, simulation tool so we have selected the opti struct as a solver which is used to deal with the structural analysis, uh, simple model analysis, uh, frequency, buckling analysis and all. So if you want to run the nonlinear analysis, we can choose the radius to get the better results. Fine. So once you are done with this, before that, I would like to just uh, validate the same thing using SOLIDWORKS. You could see uh, it is quite simple here. I'll just select the fixtures, this particular face. I'll define it and just uh, the loading condition force on this face. I'll reverse the direction and here I'll enter the magnitude as 10,000. Reverse the direction, apply, force done. So material assign the plane carbon steel as same as that of there. I'll create the mesh. Uh, I'll use the uh, a quite coarse mesh, not the well-defined mesh. So stress value might change. Uh, the displacement will be same okay if you refine your mesh your uh, stress results will also become more and more accurate so i'll simply run this yeah. so you could see these are the results so one mesh stress is 135.9 displacement is 0 0.0213 0 0.0 yeah so same thing so you can just change your uh, stress to general so that you can easily uh, read the values so i'll set it to decimal 5 so it is 135 fine so this is how we do in solidworks so just to validate here the results are done we can simply just close this split is taking some time Yeah, uh, the solver is completed. You can just simply close the job. You could see the uh, status. It is showing the job is completed. You can simply use this results directly to access, or else you can use the hyperview. Yeah. So here you can use this counter option from here. Uh, the displacement active. The result type you can simply select apply, and you could see the same thing. Zero point zero two one as we have in SOLIDWORKS in the displacement.
0.021 okay if you refine the mesh we will get the more close values so here with respect to the uh, stress you could say it is 128 129 approx and if i consider here it is 135 so if you refine the mesh it will be closer yep so like this you can just uh, deal with this mesh uh, conversions and all to get the accurate results so the displacement is uh, quite less so you can use this deformation you can set it to uh, instead of one you can set it to thousand so that you can have this uh, animation to just understand how exactly the component is deforming okay so this is how we can just uh, carry out the uh, simple static structural analysis by using the hive mesh tool okay i hope uh, you understood the basic workflow one and all we need to do and uh, how we need to get the results yep so if you want to uh, get the uh, more accurate results you need to just uh, deal with the mesh convergence in the sense you need to refine your mesh uh, until and unless you get the uh, stress or displacement results uh, but uh, normal uh, deflection not more variations there only uh, five to six percent difference will be okay so Yep, that's all about this session guys. Thank you all. Stay tuned. Bye everyone.